Hello, my lovely audience. Welcome to Time with Aunt Midwife with your beloved midwife, Kenneth. Hi, I am happy that we've met again to continue our discussion on the male reproductive system. In fact, today we are likely to draw the curtains on this interesting discussion because we are left with only two internal organs. And so to be part of this beautiful family where we learn together, have fun, vibe and promote our health, you already know what to do. Kindly subscribe to the channel like the video share leave your comments tap on the notification bell to get all the updates and as well click on the cards on the video the video cards do well to click on them thank you <laughs> to the topic for discussion as i said earlier we are left with only two internal organs the prostate gland and that of the bulbo utral or the corpus glands if we have time i may sum it up with the seminal fluid do enjoy i cannot wait i know you can't wait as well first Firstly, the prostate gland. Prostate gland is one of the important organs in the male reproductive system. Usually, we hear of what the prostate cancers affecting our men, in as much as the breast cancers and that of the cervical cancers are also affecting the women. So, it is very important that you know the prostate gland. I know you are willing to learn. I'm willing to learn too. The prostate gland is a cone-shaped structure, 4 cm long, 3 cm wide, 2 cm deep, weighing about 8 gram. The prostate surrounds the upper part of the urethra and it lies in direct contact with the neck of the bladder. That is how come if your prostate is being affected, it affects your bladder as well. This is the reason why it shares direct contact with the neck of of the bladder it is composed of glandular tissue and involuntary muscle fibers and is enclosed in a fibrous capsule so you can tell it's really enclosed in a fibrous capsule it's very protected the muscle fibers or the muscle tissue of the gland aids in ejaculation so not only your bladder will be affected if your prostate gland is affected your ability to ejaculate will as well be affected and i even say that if it's about ejaculation before before you ejaculate you would do what you would be able to um, initiate erection before ejaculation so i am saying that the physiology of um, erection having to talk about the three column spongy erectile tissues and that of the pelvic floor muscles initiating erection will enable you to have your ejaculation so if ejaculation is affected it is likely e erection would also be affected and so the Postate gland plays an important role in the male reproductive system. The postate gland also secretes a fluid, and this fluid is known as the postatic secretion. It is being constantly manufactured and it is excreted in the urine. About one mil is produced each day, but the amount is dependent upon testosterone levels why testosterone levels because it is testosterone the hormone which stimulates secretion hope you get it <laughs> it has a ph of 6.6 .6, which is slightly acidic and it is similar in composition to plasma but contains additional constituents such as cholesterol citric acid and hyaluronidase hyaluronidase is an enzyme in fact let me brief you a little on hyaluronidase hyaluronidase is the enzyme which enables sperm to penetrate the cumulus cell layer surrounding the egg and so you see this prostatic secretion is also as rich as the semen itself it adds up to the seminal fluid so you cannot take away the prostate gland when you are talking about the male reproductive system prostatic secretion is added to the sperm and seminal fluid as they pass into the urethra the prostate gland quite commonly becomes enlarged in middle-aged and elderly men and this or any other pressure on the urethral sphincter or the urethra itself results in acute retention of urine this goes to prove that our men are not only suffering from prostate cancer but as well acute retention of urine and this condition is relieved by passing catheter into the bladder or 
by prostatectomy in suitable patients and prostatectomy is the surgical procedure for the partial or complete removal of the prostate oh this would be worrying and so it's very important to be mindful about your prostate gland thank you Bobo you try all the cowper's glands and these ones they are small glands about the size of a pea very small just as you are seeing yellow in color lying just below the prostate gland they are ducked about 3 cm long open into the urethra before it reaches the penal portion this bulbo uterine glands they release a small amount of fluid prior to ejaculation and it is this fluid that lubricates the penis facilitating its entry into the vagina and so the fluid that you've been seeing before the man ejaculate yeah that is not semen and that is also not something likely to impregnate you it just makes the penis much more slippery so that it doesn't find its way it doesn't it doesn't feel difficult when the man is um, penetrating the woman as simple as that but you should also know that in as much as the prostatic secretion alone has a ph of 6.6 .6, slightly acidic the ph of the seminal fluid as a whole is 7.5 almost like blood you know blood has the same range either 7.45 almost 5 7.5 and so let's visit seminal fluid before we end today's session seminal fluid now we know that fluid from the seminal vesicles fluid from the prostate gland fluid from the bobo uterine or the corpus glands they all form part of the seminal fluid so what's the seminal fluid itself it is the fluid in which the spermatozoa are suspended it nourishes them and aids their motility we usually say the semen Passing from the seminal vesicles and duct, it travels through the ejaculatory duct to the urethra where prostatic secretions and secretions from the bulbal uterine glands are also added. It is finally ejaculated during sexual excitement. The prostatic secretion is the largest component of the seminal fluid. And so your prostate gland is very important. Now we know the component of semen or seminal fluid. Fluid from the seminal vesicles, bobo-utral glands, they also secrete their own secretions, prostatic secretions in addition, and secretion also from the seminiferous tubules. They make up the seminal fluid. Ah, oh, such an interesting topic it is. In fact, this is where time will permit us to end today's lesson. We are finally done with the male reproductive system. I'm so grateful for your valuable time, your love, and I'm so grateful that you are learning and you are promoting your health. In fact, that is uh, the vision and mission of this channel to promote our health. That is the most important thing to do. I'm so grateful we shall meet again next time, same time, if not same, yeah, same time, right? <laughs> Do take care of yourself. We shall meet again. Take care. I love you all. Bye.